Lesson 8.4, page 442, Graphing Vertex Form Quadratics. Now, the book doesn't have this title, but I'm going to call it that because that's what it is. You should be on page 442. Now, in this lesson, you will learn how to identify even and odd functions. You will learn how to graph vertex form quadratics, that this form and the pink and blue form here, these are both called vertex form, okay? That's why I'm putting that title. And then we're going to learn how to model real life problems using vertex form quadratics. Let's talk about what it means to be an even or odd function. A function y equals f of x is even when f of negative x equals f of x for each x in the domain of f. The graph of an even function is symmetric about the y-axis. Now, even as a teacher, when I read that, I'm like, what? So you really have to read this carefully and slowly. So I got a few notes here, okay? So a function is even when f of negative x equals f of x. So here's what that means. Even graphs are if you replace x with a negative or a positive, you get the same result. Okay, I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a minute. So this statement is saying it doesn't matter if I use negative x or positive x, it's going to produce the same result. Let me give you a quick example of that. Think about y equals x squared. If I plug in 3, I get 9. But what if I plug in negative 3? I still get 9. This would be an example of an even graph. If I plug in a positive or a negative, I get 9 either way. That's an even graph. Now, even graphs are symmetric about the y-axis. So even graphs would have some kind of picture like this. I'm circling it. The y-axis is the axis of symmetry. That's what this is saying. It's symmetric about the y-axis. So my axis of symmetry is at the y-axis. Now, a function is odd if f of negative x gives me the opposite of f of x for each x in the domain of f. The graph of an odd function is symmetric about the origin. The graph is symmetric about the origin when it looks the same after reflection in the x-axis and then in the y-axis. So again, if you read that, you might be like, well, wow, that sounds really complicated. Here's what it's trying to tell you. Odd graphs are if you replace x with a negative, you get the opposite result versus replacing x with a positive. Let me pick something really easy. Like here would be an odd graph if I had y equals 3x. Think about if you plug a 1 in here, you get 3. But if you plug in negative 1, you get the opposite answer. You get negative 3. That would be an odd function. The graph of this would be symmetric about the origin. Let's talk about that next. What does is, what is symmetric about the origin mean? And here's what we mean by symmetric about the origin. Here's the graph of y equals 3x. Okay, so symmetric about the origin means this. So if I take this graph, and now watch this. If I rotate it 180 degrees, look what happens. I get the same graph. It's symmetric about the origin. So, in other words, it's kind of mirrored over the x and y axis. So that's what they mean when they say that it's symmetric about, about the origin. Okay? Let's look at these and determine if these graphs are odd, even, or neither. So let's think about f of x equals 2x. Well, if I plug in the opposite of x, I get 2 times negative x, which would give me negative 2x. You notice how that's the opposite answer of that. Okay? That means this graph's odd. So if I plug a negative number in, I'm getting the opposite of plugging in a positive number. See, when you plug in a positive, you get 2x. When you plug in a negative, you get negative 2x. That's an odd function. Okay? Let's look at part B. If I take g of x, I have x squared minus 2. If I plug a negative x in there, if I take negative x and square it, I get x squared minus 2. I get the same thing. This is an even function. Okay? Um, neither. So 
if you get the same answer, it's even. If you get the opposite answer, it's odd. But it's possible to get neither. So let's look at this third example. If you plug in positive x, you get the statement 2x squared plus x minus 2. But if you plug in negative x, when you take negative x and square it, you get 2x squared. Here we get minus x minus 2. You notice this new statement, it's not the same as that. It's also not the opposite of that. Here would be the opposite if you change all the signs. Okay? So this statement is neither odd or even. It's not the same and it's not the opposite. This is neither. Okay? What I would like you to do is pause the video and you try these three. Determine if these are odd, even, or neither. And I'm back and you should have found that one is odd, two is neither, three is an even function. Let's talk about vertex form quadratics, so graphing these. So first of all, we want to remember from our previous lessons, if A is positive, that means our parabola is going to open up. That means it's going to be like that, opening upward. But if A is negative, it opens downward. So that's one thing to know. Now, these next two things. It's going to sound complicated. If h is greater than 0, the graph of this is a horizontal translation, h units to the right. If h is less than 0, it's a horizontal translation, h units to the left. Well, let me try to rephrase that. Remember, when we did in Chapter 4 the transformations, any time we had adding or subtracting inside, that was horizontal. That was left or right. We are adding or subtracting inside parentheses. So this will be left or right translations. Now here's another key point. Remember, these were always screwed up. They were opposite of what they appear. So that's what this is trying to tell you here. This is in the technical language. I'm trying to say it in a non-technical way. Okay? Anytime we are adding or subtracting inside, that's horizontal trans and it will be opposite of what you think. Okay? The vertex of these graphs will be H0. So whatever H is, either right or left, comma 0 would be the vertex. Remember, the vertex is that bottom or that top point of our parabola. And the axis of symmetry would be whatever H is. Okay? So let's take a look at this example. They want us to graph this and compare it to the graph of the parent function. So first of all, I mean, I guess you could use your calculator. Here's the problem. If you're going to use your calculator for every one of these questions, you're going to find out that it's going to take you longer than the lot of time you have on a quiz or test. Let's look at this carefully. I want you to notice some things. A equals a half. So this graph opens up because A is positive and there's a shrink to it. Next thing, do you see how we have a minus 4 in parentheses? That means this graph is translated for right. So the vertex of this graph should be at the point 4, 0. So if you look at the picture down here, you can see that they have a point 4, 0. This opens up and it's shrunk. We can easily get a couple more points. Like if I, pl I can pick any two values I want for x and plug it in, I'm gonna, I tell you what I'm going to plug in. I'm going to plug in 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 squared is 1. And, and 1 times half is half. So if I plug in 5, I get the point half. And I can mirror that over here. 3 half. And let me pick one more. I'll pick 8. If I plug in 8, 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Half of 16 is 8. So when you plug in 8, you get 8 which they have here, 8, 8, and my axis of symmetry. I'm four units away, so over here should be the point zero eight, and there's my parabola. So I should be able to really draw these without even using my calculator. I would let you use the calculator, but by the time you're done typing it all in and making tables, it's taking time. Now let's compare this to the graph of the parent function. Now the parent function has a vertex of 0, 0, and A is 1. So let's compare. Here's the parent function. Here's this function. Okay, both these functions, as you can see, open up, but 
this is shrunk compared to the parent function. So you can see that here. We have a vertical shrink by a factor of half compared to the parent function. Here's the next thing. The parent function has a vertex at 0, 0, while this function is translated 4 right. Its vertex is 4, 0. And that's what they say here. The vertex is 4, 0, and we have a translation 4 units to the right. So by looking at the equation, you ought to be able to tell how it opens and where the vertex is at. That's why they call this a vertex form quadratic. Okay? What I would like you to do is pause the video. You try these two. I want you to compare these two. I don't want you to graph them just to save the time. Compare the graph of G and H to the parent function. Okay, and we're back. And for number four, you see how A equals two? That means that this graph opens up and it's stretched compared to the parent function where A is one. And you see how we have a plus 5 in parentheses. That means we have translated the graph 5 units left of the parent function. So the vertex of this graph is negative 5, 0. And then for the second problem, number 5, A is negative 1. That means this graph is reflected compared to the parent function. And you notice how we have a minus 2 inside. That means we are translating this graph two units to the right from the parent function. So the vertex of this graph would be 2, 0. So now they just add on another layer of understanding here. Now we're going to look at graphing A times x minus h squared plus k. So you've learned these things before. A tells me if the graph opens up or down, stretched, shrunk, or reflected. That's for the parabola. H is inside. That would be left-right translations. Now you see this plus k they've thrown in here. This is outside. This is up or down translations. Now remember, inside is backwards from what you think. Outside is normal. <coughs> Oop. Sorry about that. So let's talk about a vertex form quadratic is of the form that you see listed here. This is called a vertex form quadratic. Vertex form quadratics create parabolas. Okay? All this stuff that I'm circling, I've already said all of this to you. I've said it to you here and here. Okay? Let's talk about graphing then a vertex form quadratic. So we're going to graph g of x equals negative 2 x plus 2 squared plus 3. So let's take a look here. First of all, let's look at A. A is negative 2. That means this is opening down and it's stretched. Next, I have a plus 2 inside parentheses, plus 3 outside. Plus 2 inside means move the vertex 2 left and then 3 up. So 2 left 3 up. So let's quickly do that on graph paper. So my vertex is 2 left, 3 up. I know this opens down. And by the way, if my vertex is 2 left, 3 up, that means that my axis of symmetry would be right here at negative 2. Let me draw that in there also. Okay. And all I need to do now is if I can get a couple more points, I have this plotted and I don't even need my calculator. So to get a couple extra points should be easy. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug in 0 for x. That's easy. So let's work this out real quick. So if I plug in 0, I have negative 2 times 0 plus 2 is 2 squared plus 3. So y would equal negative 2 times 4 plus 3 so negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. So if I plug in 0, I get negative 5. Well, here's that point. I can reflect that. It's 2 away from the axis of symmetry, so go 2 over here. There's my parabola. I should be able to sketch these pretty quickly without having to type it in my calculator and go through that whole key sequence. I got my vertex by just looking at the problem. I plugged in 0, found another point, mirrored it over, and there's my graph. 
they'll ask you also here to transform a graph. So consider g in example 3. Okay, so we have g of x equals negative 2, x plus 2 squared plus 3. I want to graph f of x equals g, which is this graph, x plus 5. Well, the plus 5 in parentheses is telling me to take this graph and move it 5 left. So if I go back to my diagram, okay, I'm just going to move everything 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 left. Let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 left. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 left. And there's my parabola. So that x plus, so g of x plus 5 would just be moving this 5 left. Just to save time, I'm not going to have you graph these. You'll practice that in the homework. I want you just to compare each of these to the parent function. Okay, and we're back. So for number 6, I wrote in black. Um, A is 3, so this is opening up and it's stretched. Do you see how we have minus 1 inside plus 6, plus six outside? Minus 1 inside means we're moving this 1 right and then plus 6, 6 up, so the vertex is 1, 6. For number 7, the A is a half. That means my parabola opens up and is shrunk. The plus 4 inside means go left 4, and minus 2 outside means down 2. So the vertex would be shifted to negative 4, negative 2 compared to the parent function. And I did, for number 8, I wrote it in green. Consider g in example 3. Graph f of x equals g of x minus 3. The minus 3 outside is just saying take that picture in example 3 and shift it down 3 units. To wrap it up, modeling with mathematics. Water fountains are usually designed to give a specific visual effect. For example, the water fountain shown consists of streams of water that are shaped like parabolas. Notice how the streams are designed to land on underwater spotlights. Write and graph a quadratic function that models the path of a stream of water with a maximum height of 5. So that's important. Let me highlight that. We have a maximum height of 5. It's represented by the vertex 3, 5, and we are landing on a spotlight 6 feet away from the water jet, represented by the point 6, 0. Okay? So let's think about this. Uh, we have some information. Here's a vertex form quadratic. Okay? Do you notice they just gave us this information? This is 3, right? and 5 up. So if it's 5 up, this number had to be 5, and 3 right means I must have had a minus 3 in here, because minus 3 means to go 3 right. Okay, now here's the next thing. They tell me that this equation would have the point 6, 0. So x6, y0. So I should be able to plug in a 0 for y and a 6 for x, and that would help me find out what a is. And once I have a, I'd have my equation for this problem. So let's do that. 0 would equal a times 6 minus 3, 3 squared, which is 9, plus 5. So 0 would equal 9a plus 5, and I can take away 5 and then divide by 9, and I just figured out A is negative 5 ninths. Okay? So now that I know A, I can go back up here and I can write out my equation. I'll do it in blue. So Y would have to equal negative 5 ninths times X minus 3 squared plus 5. That would be an equation for this problem. They asked me to write a quadratic function. I just did. Now, the graphing part, of course, you could graph it. You could use your calculator to assist you, but my vertex I already know is 3, 5. This is opening down. All I've got to do is go to 3, 5, plug in some other point, like I could plug in anything I want for x other than 3, and I could graph that point and mirror it. looks like they decided to plug in 4 and a half, and they mirrored that point, and there's the parabola. I'm going to stop the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.